everybody. Morning. Welcome to Fellowship Christian Center. If you're watching online, we just welcome you this morning. Um, we have we do have a few announcements. Steve and Christy are out of town, so I'm going to go ahead and do announcements now. Um, next Sunday is fifth Sunday. Not every month has five Sundays, but when they do, kids church parties. So next Sunday, Kids Church will be having a fifth Sunday luau. Okay, and we're going to be learning about Jesus, the living water. So they'll need to bring a beach towel and a, a dry change of clothes. Y'all can thank me later. Uh, also, starting today in Kids Church, anyone who showed interest in uh, helping in kids church getting on a rotation for Sunday morning kids church you can begin to shadow in there and just what that means you don't have to do anything when we go back to kids church you come back with us have a seat at the back and just enjoy the show and it's really fun uh, the curriculum that we use is is uh, a whole lot of digital curriculum meaning it's on the TV and it holds their attention and it engages them and allows them to interact and do things so it's less on you so I don't want that to scare anybody but if if that's a concern I just invite you to come back and and watch and see how we do things and if you uh, can't come back today I know there's some that are interested that are not here today we'll continue doing that so um, I think our last announcement that I know of is Bible school is coming up June the 21st through the 23rd It'll be a Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday night. So there'll be, uh, I guess, more announcements coming later about work days and things like that to get ready, but it's called Anchored. And so it's an underwater thing, so that's going to be fun. I just invite everybody to stand up with us this morning as we enter into worship. I read a verse yesterday in John, maybe in John chapter 1, and it said, The light... The light shone out in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. And it reminded me immediately, and I don't know why I felt led to share this, but I did. It reminded me immediately. Uh, Dad, John, and I were eating lunch this past week, and there was a TV in the restaurant, and it showed this man, I think he was a police officer, he single-handedly lifted a car off of a woman who was trapped inside. She had wrecked. And I remember looking at him and he said, that's supernatural, you know, and I said, I think he had some help. They weren't giving God any credit on TV, but they didn't have to, because we all know that he had some help doing that. When I read that verse, the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. I thought about that. And I thought, how many, th how many things does God do and people are clueless or he doesn't get the credit for? And it just, it made me want to be more uh, aware of times to give God credit for things that may seem, you know, just supernatural or like a phenomenon. The Bible says that every good and perfect thing comes from above. And so we just, we just, I just wanted to be more aware of giving God credit for things and just shining His light in the darkness and praying that, that some of the scales would fall off people's eyes and that, that they would begin to comprehend that we're not capable of those such things without supernatural help and that his name is Jesus so if you would just join me in prayer Heavenly Father we declare your works this morning we acknowledge your works this morning we know Lord that these type things don't just happen by by coincidence Heavenly Father that you are sovereign and that you are able to do mighty things Lord and even if people don't realize that it's you, God, we do and we thank you for it. Heavenly Father, we just enter into a time of worship. We worship you for who you are, God, and for who you're not. You're not a man that you should lie. Anytime we've ever been deceived or lied to, God, that was not of you. Heavenly Father, and we just declare, God, that you are true and that you are just, that you are holy and that you're righteous. Heavenly Father, align us with your will, Lord. Help us to walk in your will, God. We align our hearts with you this morning, Lord. We set our mind on you this morning, God. 
God, I'm reminded of things you've done in my life, Lord, even if they seemed small and the things that just seemed impossible and you came through, God, I'm reminded and I acknowledge you for it and I give you honor and credit for it and I thank you for it, Lord. And I worship you for it, God. And I'm expecting you to do great and mighty things through this church, Lord. As we come together in unity, God, and seeking after you and praising you seven times a day, I pray that you would begin to give people ideas, Lord, of ways that we can spread the gospel, Father. I believe, I believe, God, that boldness and faith will rise up within us, Lord, and that we will begin to see the fruit of our labor, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we worship you, we love you, and we magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. up this morning. Let's just ask him together this morning just to come do all he wants to do here in this house today. Just lift up a prayer of thanksgiving in your own words. Oh, 
yes, we believe. We believe in you, wonderful things. Oh, God of all power, King of all glory, you do wonderful things. God of all creation. the God of all power, King of all glory, you do wonderful things. God of all creation, the King of our salvation, you do wonderful things. And when you move in power, can happen. We believe that you do wonderful things because you're here with us. Anything can happen. We believe that you do wonderful things. Come on, let's lift our hands and sing it. When you move in power, a miracle will happen. We believe. the God of all power, King of all glory, you do wonderful things. God of all creation, King of our salvation, you do wonderful things. You got singing. God of all
set our footsteps with you. We set our footsteps with you. We want to walk according to your word now. And stand on the promise that you'll come through. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. You'll never leave me or forsake me. Can you just say that this morning? Just say it in faith. You'll never leave me or forsake me. One more time. You'll never leave me or forsake me. Lord is my shepherd He goes before me Defender behind me I won't fear We believe it's true Filled with anointing My cup's overflowing Hey, I'm reminded that No weapon can harm me No, it can't, no So I won't
sing that, declare that this morning. that's who you are we know anything good that ever came in our life was all because of you yes, yes, yes. we remember what you've done we remember what you've done we remember what you've done and we believe you'll do it again. We remember what you've done. We remember what you've done and we believe you'll do it again. You said greater things than these. Greater things than these. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. Greater things than these, you said greater things than these. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief.
want to give him glory to a few weeks ago. I don't know if I, I don't know if I shared it in here. I don't think I did, but uh, we, we, we have this strange kind of ministry that happens to me and Danielle where, where people who need help show up at our house. It's just, it just happens that way. And we both know whenever God's sending somebody to us, and a few weeks ago, it may have been about a month ago now, a girl was walking down the road, and we just so happened to be outside, Cole wasn't home. We were outside working in the yard, and she'd come walking past our driveway. She had a backpack with her, and she needed, she asked, she needed a ride, and so I got some bottles of water, and we started going down the road, she and I did, and I said, where are you going? She said, well, I've been trying to get clean and sober, and my boyfriend came in and started using again, so I'm just walking, trying to get away. I said, well, just so happens, I may be able to help. She said, I've called five different programs today trying to get anyone to let me in and I can't get a hold of anybody. And I said, well, I happen to, I happen to be friends with the people down at the summit of Fort Payne and I happen to have a real good friend of mine who started a place called the Father's House. I'm pretty sure I could get you to one of those. She said, I called both of them today. I couldn't get a hold of them, but I've been to both of them before and left early. Long story short, I ended up being able to take her to the father's house that day, and she stayed two weeks and did real good, and then she left again. And it really broke my heart because I had been praying so hard for her. I just, when, we, when she got to our house, she had she'd been beaten pretty badly by her boyfriend, and I don't know how often that happened, but my heart broke for her. But I found out last week that she had been arrested, which was probably the best thing that could happen, and that she was begging to get back in the summit. And they decided to accept her. And I just praise God for that. I praise God that he intervened in a way that didn't seem like a good thing. You know, being arrested never seems like a good thing, but sometimes that's God's grace on someone's life. And I believe that he is pouring out his grace over her life, and I'm praying that she'll recognize that and that she'll stop running and that she'll stay her time there and get that her mind will be transformed and that she'll be changed. But I give him glory that that he provided a way for her to enter, in, enter into the summit. It was right after, just a few days after the summit ladies came here, she was able to get back in there. So I just want to praise God for that this morning.
Anybody else have anything you'd like to praise the Lord for or share before we transition? Father, we thank you and worship you for who you are. We thank you, God, for your supernatural power that you display, God. We acknowledge it. We give you credit for it. Help us to tell of it. Provide times for us to share these good things that you've done with people, God, that it may inspire some faith within them also and, and help belief rise up. Thank you for the miracle, unseeming miracle you performed with Miss Pam's mom with her eyes, God. We just pray for complete and total healing over her eyes in the name of Jesus, God. I pray, God, that as she begins to see more things physically, God, that you would begin to show her more things spiritually, Lord. That you would just increase her vision in multiple areas, God, and use her, Father, for your glory. Heavenly Father, I lift up my friend Nikki at the summit, God, and I pray, God, that you would set her free to the uttermost. I pray, God, that every lie that she's ever believed would be uprooted, God, and replaced with the truth of your word about who she is, God, and who she's not, Father. I pray that her mind would be completely transformed, Lord, that she would be changed and that she would come out telling of the good things that you have done, Lord, that she'd be one more domino in that long road that you've started. We praise you for your goodness, God. We ask that you'd use us, Lord. Let us be willing, even if it seems radical. Let us be bold, Father. Have your way in the rest of this service, God, and in kids' church. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a tithe or offering, feel free to bring that up at this time. Good morning, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> it's good to see everybody here today. I'm going to invite you to go ahead and stand up. Uh, you'll find your place in Mark chapter 11. And then... <clears throat> I'm going to be going to the first chapter of, uh, of Nehemiah. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you to do something different today. Can we do something different? Amen. If you feel comfortable with this, I want you to stretch out your hands toward me and pray out loud and pray for me.
Amen. <clears throat> and I want you to stretch out your hands again if you feel comfortable doing this. And I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we just come before you today, God, we just want to thank you and we praise you and give you honor and glory. And Father, I just pray that, Lord, that the only personality that comes through today will be the Lord Jesus himself. Lord, I mean that sincerely from my heart. God, just let your word, your pure word, come forth today and find place in our hearts today, Lord. And God, I just give you the glory for it. Lord, you know what needs to be. And Lord, we put that in your hands. God, do what you desire to do and what needs to be. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that. You may be seated. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, you know, we have been looking um, at certain scripture. We've looked at Colossians chapter 3, and uh, we've talked about <clears throat> setting our minds on things above, not on earthly things. And I just want to testify and tell you how much this has helped me uh, because I, you know... <clears throat> I found myself kind of in a place to where uh, really I needed to be revived, just to be quite honest with you. And and then uh, we brought along with that <clears throat> Psalms 119, and, and that scripture there has... Oh, it's just, it's blessed me so much. I got hold of verse 164 where the psalmist was praising God seven times a day for his, <clears throat> his righteous judgments. And I thought, <clears throat> you know, why don't I do that? And so I just began to try and, and practice that. And God has, he's, He's just really become ever so much real to me. And I've encouraged you to do that. I hope you're doing that. Uh, you know, I want to just take us back here for a minute. Um, well, I'm going to take you back over to Colossians uh, just for a minute here. I really <clears throat> I didn't plan on doing that, but... I think that that would be good for us just to take another fresh <clears throat> look at that uh, because of the importance of it. And I just want to sort of just reiterate just a few things. So notice in verse 3, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ. Uh, I said before that in some translations they translate this uh, and use the word since you have been risen with Christ instead of ye but or if instead of if but the truth of the matter is this uh, it's always a if because when we're looking at God's word when we're preaching God's word when we're teaching or declaring there's always a condition of whether or not I have been risen or whether or not you have been risen with Christ. And in this particular sense here, he's speaking of our having uh, died with him in his death. You can bring uh, Romans chapter 6 into this. In other words, it's, it's, it's saying that since we have died in him, since we have been buried with him in his death uh, and we are risen with him in his resurrection. In other words, we've been made alive spiritually. And here's what I want you to understand is if we have had spiritual resurrection in Christ, then we are to seek those things that are above. Well, uh, uh, if we've been born again, we're a new creation. 
and we are to begin to seek God's kingdom and God's purposes. Those things which are above speak of the vast <coughs> creation of God, and I believe more specifically his kingdom and his purposes, what God would have in our lives. We are to begin to seek what God would have in our lives. It says where Christ sat is on the right hand of God. We know this speaks of his finished work. And it also speaks of authority. The right hand in scripture speaks of authority. We know that all authority has been given to Christ. We know that he, he's been given a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so... This being made fresh to me uh, has got me on this thing to where, uh, and I've been talking about this, and I've been asking you and inviting you to come along with me on a seeking, on seeking God to, 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 to draw closer to him, uh, to, to go more deeply into his word to bring the word back to the place that the word rightfully deserves to have in our life uh, to, to grow deeper in Christ and deeper in his love and I believe that as a result of this then we're going to begin to see some things happen that we long to see happen things that need to happen and take place. Somebody said this a long time ago. I don't know who the first one was to use this illustration as it pertains to revival, but they said that, you know, we should draw a circle around us and say, God, start right here. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, for quite some time now, I've had a sticky note on our cabinet door where Trish keeps the goodies and the fudge rounds and uh, Oreos and some good stuff. Every, every time I walk over there, and how many of you know it's pretty often that I walk over there and, and tater chips and all that, and I, I see that. And I've been looking at that for days upon days and months upon months, and it's been reminding me. But I want to tell you, I believe it's time for it to begin. How many of you want to be revived? If I were to ask you today, do you want to be revived? Do you want to experience revival? I've decided that I want to experience revival. And I don't know on large scale what all exactly that that's going to look like. And I'm not going to pretend to be able to tell you that. But I am telling you today, as God has searched my heart and he knows me completely and thoroughly, I want to be revived and I want to experience revival. I want to be made alive again in him and experience him and the depths of his love and then all that he desires to do in and through me. That's good and that's fine. Now, you know, God wants to use us, but I just don't think God can use us unless we're loving him like we need to, unless we're really growing in depth and in, in love with him. I, I want to see revival. I want to experience revival. Now, it goes on, it says, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, you know, we've all got our lives to live Ever since you were just very, very young, you you were you were shaped, you you grew, uh, 
you, you became who you are. You started doing what you're doing now. And in that sense, you know, that doesn't stop. We have our lives to live, but yet as a lifestyle, you and I need to be practicing God's presence in our lives. And I believe that that's one of the things, if you want to just flip over here to Psalms 119, verse 164, and that this has, has brought back to me. You know, we, we, we've got to go to school. We've got to go to work. We've got to do the things that we do. But there's a way that we can do that, but yet still practice God's presence. The psalmist said, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Righteous judgments just basically means that God always does the right thing. And actually, when you study that and its deeper meaning, it's regardless of whether what we think about it, whether we like it or not, God always does the right thing. The number seven, as we know, is a number for completeness. It's not a limitation. When this number is used, it's not given as a limitation. So this number means more of like praying without ceasing. It's ongoing. It's continually. And, <clears throat> you know, we can change things in our life if we'll set our heart to it before God and we can grow deeper in him and more depth in him and and begin to practice his presence and praise him for who he is and for all that he does and in that we're remembering him we're keeping him before our mind amen and, and we're remembering him. You know, many times when you read in the Old Testament, God's people forgot him. That's a bad thing. It could be said today that many have forgotten him. Many, many have forsaken the Lord. Amen. Uh, I don't want to be like that. I, 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 I want to finish well. I want to finish strong. Amen. I, I, I want to run the race that's set before me. Amen. With, with the goal of the prize that the Lord has for us. Amen. In order to be pleasing unto him. I, I, I heard a song. Uh, I've been listening a little bit more to uh, Christian music. And I heard a song called Well Done. And, you know, the greatest words that you and I could ever hear are well done. When, when, when this life is over, whenever that time comes, we want to hear well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well, <clears throat> in saying that, <clears throat> you know, I believe that revival is promised in Scripture. Uh, you know, if we were to go, and I'm not going to turn there, but we could probably quote it by heart. Uh, the wonderful scripture that if my people are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. It, it's a promise. It's a promise. And, 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 and through my reading and research and, and I'm, and I'm, I've been really, uh, I've been revived in that area uh, as well, uh, just wanting to dig deeper and to understand more, you know, about revival. I've come to believe that not only is it a promise, but that if a people will just make their minds up to do the things that are necessary, and there are some things that are necessary, and we're going to be talking about that, that it, it's not, it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out thing. It doesn't have to be something, oh, you know, it's, it's going to take years for it to happen. I, I, I don't, that's, that, that's not what I'm seeing. 
I, I, I'm, I'm seeing that if we will quickly, quickly make our minds up concerning the things that uh, are necessary, if you will, the prerequisites, and, and do them quickly, that God will grant revival. And I've been hearing, I've been hearing some good things. I've been, I've been hearing that uh, there are some people that believes that here in this nation that we're right on the threshold of, a, of what they're calling a third awakening. I don't know what, how you feel about that, but um, that's something that I'm, that I'm looking more into as well. Uh, you know, the first great awakening uh, was back in the early 1700s, and it's been said that as a result of the preaching of John Whitfield, that this nation even exists today, that had not it been for that revival, had not it been for that awakening, had not it been for the preaching of that man, that this nation might not have even become a nation. Uh, there's some, I'm kind of digging into this. I'll throw this out there to you. Uh, you could probably Google it. Uh, but there's a man and his son, uh, their last name are Barton, is Barton. Uh, wall, I think it's wallbuilders.com. They've got a lot of good stuff on revival and on uh, awakening. And from what I understand, uh, mostly the topics that were used during these were things that were going on in the world and in society. They would preach on the things, in other words, the signs and the things that were happening and, and, and taking place in the world. Uh, I think that it's time, speaking for myself, first of all, that we get, our, that we get back to where we need to be. And there's, I'm just going to share with you what I have today concerning this and uh, I believe that we can see revival I've really I've been hesitant to even use that word and 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 I'm gonna I want to tell you this again uh, I think I was a little bit like Jonah God had to get me in a place I didn't fall over in the water and get swallowed up by a great fish but he had to get me into a place before I could really get myself to move forward with this. Because when, when you say the word revival, you know, nowadays it's, it's, it's so, you know, it's, it's, it's painted with a wide, uh, you know, pen. Uh, a lot of people have got certain ideas of what they think revival is, and we're going to be looking at some things that, and that what revival is not and what revival is. But, and, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I'm, I'm, I'm looking into the older wells of, of what God has done. And we know that God is, wants to do a new thing, but he, he doesn't want to do a new principle. Uh, the, 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 the principles that worked before on revival is what it will still take for revival to take place today. So <clears throat> that being said, uh, that's kind of enough of my, my rambling around there. I want to take us over here, and uh, I want you to, to hear what this man said in Nehemiah chapter 1, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month Chislu in the 20th year as I was in Susan the palace that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof 
are burnt with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open and that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt, we have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandedest by thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech ye, the word that thou commandedest thy servant Moses, saying, If you transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, uh, <clears throat> though there were of you cast out into the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now, these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name. And prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's <clears throat> cupbearer. Wonderful story here about how Nehemiah surveyed the condition of his people. He surveyed the condition of what was going on, not only with his people and among his people, but also what was going on in the, the surroundings, or, or in other words, uh, <clears throat> the wall of Jerusalem was broken down and the gates uh, were burnt with fire. Uh, Nehemiah saw the conditions and it moved him. It moved him to action. Can you and I look at what's going on today in the church? Can we look at what's going on today in society and can we be moved to action? I think we should be. I think that we should recognize the signs that's going on. I mean, my goodness, how much more is going to have to happen before the Lord comes back? When you think about everything, you know, just just without without going without going into great detail. Think about all the things now that has become accepted in church. It's not just not not not, not necessarily the world, but just think about all the things that have become accepted in church and that is becoming normal now. Things, uh, in other words, sins and things that clearly in Scripture are spelled out very, very, very plainly. These old preachers uh, of yesterday um, that God used mightily, the, the Wesleys, Whitfield, Jonathan Edwards, Feeney, many, many, many others, those are well known. They spoke very plainly during their time. Uh, not in a condemning way, they just spoke the truth in love. They, 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 they just spoke very plainly so that people, you know, could, could understand and in this day and time uh, where we are, I think that falling away 
spiritually has been taking place for quite a long while now. You know, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, In the latter days many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils or demons. That's what we're seeing now. Amen. The love of many are waxing colder and colder. Matthew 24. So much deception that is going on. I want to encourage you today to get back to God's word and give God's word the rightful place that it so much deserves in your life and be a, a reader and a lover and a doer of God's word. We need to bring God's word back to light in our life today. Amen. It, we will be blessed for it, and then God can use us at whatever capacity that God uses us or desires to use us. But I want you to notice that not only did he survey everything that was going on, uh, and he was moved. I want to tell you the first thing he was moved to, and that is he was moved to confess. Brothers and sisters, how long has it been since we've examined ourselves and examined our situation, examined our own spirituality? You know, we're... <laughs> I'm sorry, but James is going to have to show up a little bit. But, you know, we're really good at finding fault in somebody else. But are we equally as diligent to look within our own lives? And, and that's, that's, what it's, that's what it's going to take. Uh, I, I, I just, <laughs> some, of, some of you may be saying, brother, I've already been kind of involved in something or whatever and you don't have a clue what you're about to get into you're exactly right I really I probably don't but all I all I know is 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 we we've got to move in this direction because because if we don't experience revival we're just going to dwindle down and things are going to continue to go down and we don't need to be blaming nobody for what we're not seeing but our own self and I'm I'm blaming <clears throat> myself so I want to be revived what they did here and what he was willing to do was <clears throat> he said God we have sinned against you we have and then he said he took it a step further, and he said, both I and my father's house have sinned. Nehemiah didn't blame it on the state. He didn't blame it on the government officials for the condition. He took responsibility himself. Amen. When we begin to take responsibility ourselves and to look inwardly, and say, oh God, and begin to confess. What does it mean to confess? It means to come in agreement. It means to, uh, in, in this case, it means in the biblical sense, to agree with God concerning what he says about sin. Amen. And <clears throat> I'm not trying to say uh, one thing or the other. I don't know uh, where you stand. I don't know what you've got in your life that you need to confess and to turn from. All I know is what I've got in my life. And I've been, I've been, <clears throat> I've been repenting. Uh, now, that's not something to brag about, but I'm just telling you how serious that I am about this. Uh, and when I say that, it doesn't mean that I had just fallen off into some deep, dark, secret sin. But the truth of the matter is, is we all have areas in our life and struggles and things that we deal with. And, and then we can just grow cold and 
I, I think, I think as far as for me, uh, I, I, and it's, it's kind of hard to say, but it's one of those things, you know, that I, I didn't really realize it, but, you know, you, you kind of get used to complacency. And, and, and part of the, Part of the problem with the layout of seeing church in Revelations, you know, God says I would that you were either hot or cold. And, and I believe that this is what he means for the men about that. If you're going to drink something hot, you want it to be hot. If you're going to drink something that's meant to be cold, you want it to be cold. And he said you were neither hot nor cold, so I'll spew you out of my mouth. Why? Because something that needs to be warm and is cold, I mean, it's just like coffee. Don't give me cold coffee. Or I don't like hot, sweet tea. I like cold, sweet tea. Anyway, that's just the way I believe the Holy Spirit was at least showing me. Uh, and I realized that there were waters in Laodicea, there were there were cisterns, and, and uh, that that did produce uh, this type of water, and that God was using that as an analogy for their spirituality. So, what is it that the Lord was saying about the Laodicean church? They're blending in. They were blending in. Amen. But He's called us to be separate. He, he's called us to be the light of the world, as Casey is talking about the light. He's called us to be the salt of the earth. And so you think about that in our own individual life. I need to be revived. I, I, think, I've, I think I've had a candle under a bushel somewhat. Uh, so I want to be revived. I want to be I want to be revived, and, and I, I, want to, I want to see God move. I want to see lives changed. I want to see God do what it is that God does. And I think the first and foremost prerequisite that we need to understand, first of all, is we're going to have to be willing to be honest within ourselves. We're going to have to be willing to be honest and to say, Lord, I've done this or Lord, I've done that. And I want you to forgive me of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So a lot more, you know, could be said about all of that. And, and I've, the things that I've seen and the things that I've read uh, concerning revival, not everybody wants revival. Uh, not everybody wants real revival because not everybody wants to be real. But revival is promised, and I believe that we can have what God has promised. We want to claim His promises. Amen. They're 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 yea and amen, right? He's not a God that he should lie, and he's promised that he would send revival. I think that when I think that when repentance takes place, I remember uh, Erwin Lutzer. I read a book by Dr. Erwin Lutzer. I don't know if he, at the time, he was pastor of the Moody Church. I don't know if he's. That's been a long time ago. He's probably not. So. But he said it cost one man $5,000 for a revival. And then he explained that that man had, he was construction, um, he owned a construction company and he cheated somebody $5,000. So there's just, there's lots of things that we can look at in our lives and just let God's word 
let God's word shine and let God's word and God's Holy Spirit shine upon the areas that need to be uh, so that we can confess our sin and come in agreement with the Lord. He says that if we'll do that, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And to be quite honest with you, we can't even operate in the kind of biblical faith that we need to unless we're practicing repentance and practicing forgiveness. Now, look with me here in Mark, and in Mark chapter 11, <clears throat> and this brings me to what I had been talking about, and uh, I want I want to kind of jump back on this right now. Um, I had mentioned on Mother's Day, I just had this idea for, for mothers that had children that might be out in the world to, <clears throat> to write a letter of, of your testimony to, to your child and, and just tell them what the Lord means to you. You know, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that I know with absolute certainty that the Lord told me to do that. But here's what I will tell you. <clears throat> I believe it's a good idea. I believe it's a good idea, and I believe God will honor it. We... Uh, some of, some of you may, may have never given a testimony. Some of you have. I remember years ago, we had a, we were in, involved out here in, in Maranatha Baptist Church. This was a long time ago. And there was a, a, a brother uh, by the name of Roger Bedford. He came and taught on evangelism. And he kind of led us in a little exercise where we wrote down our testimony. We learned how to give our testimony uh, and kept it within two minutes. And, you know, that, that's good for witnessing. That's, that's starters for witnessing. And then, you know, if the Lord opens up the door, you know, you can continue on. Uh, I'm not saying that to say that you want to limit your testimony, <laughs> that you're going to ride out for two minutes. I, that's not what I'm saying at all, but I, I just, I just want to, could I just get a show of hands? How many of you in here think that's a good idea? Okay, thank you. Okay. Now let me say this. I want us to broaden that out and not, and not limit it to anybody that you want to write a letter to. And so here's, here's what I would, here's, I think, and I'm just kind of sort of getting it kick-started, okay? I don't have all the answers, but you may, you may expand on this idea with you personally or whatever, but anybody in your family or anybody that you might know that you might would just write them a letter, and I, and this is the thing I feel so strongly about, that you tell them what the Lord means to you. You put that in word, and then you tell them what they mean to you. And whatever else, you know, the Lord gives you to say. And <clears throat> what I'd like for us to do, I'm, I'm, there's some people that's, that's not here today, but what I'd like for us to do is I'd like for us to bring that letter in here and I'd like for us to have a time in service to where we actually anoint and pray over these letters and just ask, just ask God's blessing on it. And then let me tell you this. 
as I said before, I don't know how quickly that we would see any kind of response out of this. But I do know this. People that give you letters or that you give letters to, that means something to them. They'll put that up and they'll keep it. What are you trying to say? I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to say, first of all, I believe God's going to honor him. And I, and I believe that he's going to do great and mighty things through it. In some situations, will it be immediate? It may be immediate, but it may be something that's on down the road. It may be that they pick that up later on, even long after we're gone. Amen. I'm going to participate in this too. And, and because that will mean something to them that you took the time to do that. Amen. He'll speak to them. He'll keep on speaking to them. And who knows, it may speak to someone else even, even beyond, beyond their life. So in Mark chapter 11... Anybody that's ever dealt with faith scripture, you've looked at this scripture. It's, a, it's just an amazing uh, scripture. It's an amazing promise. Jesus <clears throat> is walking by and he sees a fig tree. And, of course, we know that a lot of people think, you know, this is symbolizing the nation of, of Israel. Um, I'm not so sure that it is in this partic particular context, but it, it may be. So we'll just say that it's definitely possible that it is. Uh, but it says that in verse 12 of chapter 11, he was hungry. He saw the fig tree. Uh, it had leaves on it, but he came to it hoping to pull some figs, and so the figs weren't there yet. Uh, one writer says that whenever a fig or uh, yeah a fig tree begins to put on leaves, that normally the fruit comes along with it, kind of simultaneously there. And, but this is really interesting because it didn't have the figs on it yet. And Jesus spoke a word, and he said, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Well, then he goes on, and uh, Jesus, Jesus was, he was feeling it this day. I mean, he, he went it. He went into the temple, and man, they were in there buying and selling and exchanging money and had animals in there and all this stuff. And, and uh, in verse 17, he said, Is it not written, My house shall be called a nation of all nations, the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. And so he really got on to them about this. So they just kind of rock along there. And then his disciples, if you look in verse 21, Peter calling to remembrance, saying to him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed, it's withered away. <clears throat> and what Jesus said next is just astounding. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast, thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. 
And when you stand praying, forgive if you have hauled against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. So here we see the answered prayer and forgiveness are linked together in other places. In the New Testament, we find this. So I want to back into this. I want to back into this house. So look at the last verse. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. It also breaks our intimacy with God. If we're harboring, and, and this, this, is a, this is a touchy situation for probably everybody. But if, if, if you want to experience revival in your life, amen, you're going to have to forgive, and I'm going to have to forgive. And you may say, well, brother, I'm just not feeling it. He didn't ask if you was. He didn't ask if you were feeling it. Well, I, to be quite honest with you, I don't want to. Well, he didn't ask if we wanted to. But he's telling us, he's telling us what must take place. And I, I'm going to just be straightforward here, brothers and sisters. If you're harboring non-forgiveness and bitterness in your heart, you're holding back the flow of God in your life which in turn will hold back the flow of God even in this church. Now, that's not going to keep God from moving in revival, but it can cause you to be left out of it if you don't forgive. So you should say, God, help me with this, because first and foremost, I want to be in right standing with you. I don't want to do anything that's going to be keeping me apart from you and then you forgive by faith you forgive by faith and in some cases you may need to go see somebody and in some cases you may need to give them a call if it's someone that's passed on you can still forgive them and you will reap the benefit from that. But it's important that we forgive. Verse 23, when you stand praying, forgive. In other words, it's going to be a, it'll be a hindrance to prayer. And if we're going to experience revival, we're going to have to be doing some praying. And so in order for us to pray and be effective in our praying, our heart's going to have to be right with God. And if we're not forgiving people, our heart is not right with God. So, he says, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and ye shall have them. Wow. This is so powerful. I mean, think about this, how, how powerful that this is. Now, you know, there's, there's other scripture in the Bible concerning prayer. There's other scripture in the Bible concerning things that we, that we get or things that we don't get. And we have to take the whole Bible together as a whole. But God says there's a prayer of faith that we can pray. And, and, and I wanted to share this with you today to encourage you to show you what is possible, the potential that you can see in your life. Jesus said himself, he said, have 
faith in God. Have faith in God. And I just wanted to share that with you so that it will encourage you and build up your faith for you to have faith in God. But faith has to be exercised. So I think that this will be a good exercise for us to do. The writing of the letter will be a good thing for us to do. And to put that together, we're going to be exercising our faith and we're going to believe that God is going to take that and use that. He, he goes on and he says that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. I would say unto you that whatever that is within God's will for us to have, no matter what it is, can be applied to this verse of Scripture and to this principle, that we can have whatever it is that God desires for us to have. But we've got to get back to a place of faith before we can have faith, the kind of faith that will actually move a mountain We've got to get back to this kind of faith. And I believe that in order for us to get back to this kind of faith, that we've got to do the kind of repenting that will get us back into a position that will of right standing with God. You know, because uh, here's the thing. If we're not where we need to be in him, we're not going to have the kind of faith that we need to have for God to move and to do great and mighty things. Amen. Would you stand up with me today? And I just believe that God, I just believe that we're going to see God do great and mighty things. We sing the songs about the things that God does. We sing the songs about the things that God does. If you and I will become a revival, we won't just sing the songs about what God does. We will see the things that God does. We'll see it. Hallelujah. We'll see it. Mm. And I want to see it. I, I want to see it. I, I, I'm, not like, I'm not like the one that, that was just chasing after the Lord and say, show me a sign. That's not where my heart's at. I want to see God move because I know that he will. And, and what he has done, he'll do before, and he's not a respecter of persons. And he'll hear us just like he'll hear anybody. He'll hear our prayers today just like he heard them in the early 1700s or in, even later on in the second great awakening. God will hear our prayers. The Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. And I'm wanting to step out and believe and stand on God's word. Amen. Would you just, would you just lift up your, your hands for just a moment? And let me pray this over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I may have not adequately said what's in my heart, but God, I pray that they have heard my heart. And God, I pray that they know that I'm wanting my heart to be what your heart is. And God, I just pray for those right now that's going to put these letters together. God, that you would just direct them in such a way. God, that you would just anoint them with power from on high. God, to put in the Word. God, something that's going to touch the hearts of those that receive these letters. And God, we just thank you for it today. God, we thank you.
thank you for having mercy on us. Lord, we thank you for loving us today. God, we thank you for what you did on Calvary. God, we thank you for what you did in our heart, Lord. God, I just praise you today. I magnify you today. You're worthy to be praised. God, let faith rise up in our hearts, Lord. God, where it's been cold, Lord, let faith be rekindled, Lord. Let us renew the fire of of the Holy Spirit within us, Lord. Let us come back to our first love, Lord. Let us be those that love you, Lord God, with all of our heart and mind and strength and soul and bodies. Love you with everything that we are, God. Help us, Lord, I pray. And God, I give you glory for it today. I thank you right now, Lord. <clears throat> In Jesus' wonderful name, we give you thanks. And Lord, we expect miracles to happen. We expect it, Lord. And Lord, we're going to keep on expecting it. Lord, let us renew our minds. Let us renew our minds. Lord, let us place that word in our minds and in our hearts. And let us dwell on it. And let us meditate upon it. Father, while we're out in the world, Lord, even from this day forward, Lord, let us be ready to give an answer to everyone that asks you for the hope that is in us. Let us be ready from this moment forward to give an answer. Let us not be ashamed of it. And let us not worry about what we'll say because you will give us the word from our heart to tell what great things you've done in our lives. Father, we thank you for it today. We thank you so very much. And Lord, collectively, we just turn our hearts toward those right now, God, that we We just pray for wayward children. We just pray for those loved ones. We just pray for those friends right now, God, that, are, that, are, that have gone too far away, far away, far away. I didn't mean too far away, but they're farther than they should have gone. And, Lord, we just pray for them right now. And, Lord, we just believe that you're, that you're moving in their life right now. You're just, Lord, Father, let us be encouraged, God, that there are people. And Lord, we can look at our own self and see what you did for us. And God, you'll do it for them. Lord, reach down. We ask you to reach down wherever they may be right now. this and Lord you said to not doubt in our hearts and Lord we're just not going to doubt we're just not going to church could you say that right now could you just say I'm just not about to doubt here. I'm not going to doubt I'm not going to doubt God, I thank you that we have what we have asked for. Hey, glory to God. I praise you that we have what we have asked for. And I give you glory and I give you praise. You will do it. You said you would do it. We thank you for it. We thank you. We thank you for it. <laughs> Oh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll give this another week or two or so. Those of you that are watching us out there, we'd love to have you participate in this. And I, I just want to, 
I just want to give you a, an earnest invitation if you're watching this. Come and help us. We'd love to have you come and help us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I covet your prayers, church. I'm going to be praying for you. I want you to pray for me. God, he's, he's just rolling so much through my heart and mind right now. So much word. I just want to do what he'll have me do. And I want you to do what he'll have you do. Let me just leave you with this. You know the little, God took that little story of the, the little boy that had the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And you know, I just thought about what God did with that. And I, I want to ask you to consider something. Would you give God your two fish and five loaves of bread? for me and you that's going to be different but if if we'll give God what we have he'll break it and he'll multiply it and we'll see great things happen amen I'm going to close on that William would you pray